In this video, I'd like to share with you some tips that I've learned from buying used guitars. There's this term that goes around called gear tube, which is kind of like that keeping up the Joneses thing, isn't it? Where you're basically always looking for the next guitar. And you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that per se. It's nice to be interested in guitars. It's nice to uh, have a couple of nice examples in your hands. But here are a few tips that um, I always like to share with people when they ask me about buying used guitars. So if you're new around here and you want to get started learning jazz guitar, which is mostly what this channel is about, then I have a free beginner jazz guitar guide listed and linked below. The first lesson which I'd like to share with you that I've learned fairly recently is that any piece of gear is basically replaceable unless you're talking about something very niche, a one-off handmade guitar or something like that. Most guitars are replaceable. For example, if you want a good Telecaster to play jazz on, I used to be on the relatively narrow mind that you know you had to have like a good vintage spec Telecaster and it needed to have a certain pickup, but you know there are plenty of models available at any given time. New models by Fender for Telecasters, you can build them yourself, or you can find quality used Mexican, Japanese, American, Chinese um, guitars which will do the same thing really. Um, once you know what you want from a Telecaster. So, you know, I've found it several times now after buying and selling lots of different Telecasters that if I get one that basically has a good neck pickup, it has the action set how I like it, then, and the strings that I like, then basically, you know, Bob's your uncle. You're kind of good to get that sound and, you know, you can pick up almost any Telecaster and with a few modifications, get a decent jazz Telecaster. And I've earned all of them, you know, American standards, I've had uh, vintage reissue guitars, all kinds of things really. Of course, you know, you, you want one that inspires you. And of course, there are some which are marginally better than others, but they're not as drastically better than what you might think. Sometimes they can literally just, you know, feel slightly different and, there's not as much night and day differences between good telecasters really so the same can be said with arch tops and jazz guitars you know i've had a few jazz guitars and really there's so many good models that you can get you can get a good quality used eastman um, you can get kind of all the you know guitars which i like to have old guilds and yamahas and things like that but you know even some of the kind of uh, lesser expensive guitars like samix and epiphones can be made to play and sound okay as well so it's all replaceable so i think it's kind of um in one sense almost a bit silly to get too attached now i know it's not that simple sometimes we get sentimentally attached to guitars that we have for a long time and stuff but generally speaking you know um i'm once you've bought and sold a couple of them you realize that almost every guitar is basically replaceable the second point is that there is always another guitar you have to be very happy with the guitar and the deal really uh, if you're not, then just walk away because there are several other models that exist. And yeah, you know, some models are quite rare if you just really kind of narrowly set on one specific, you know, jazz guitar. If you specifically want one Eastman model, then you could be waiting, you know, months for that one model to show up on eBay. But like I said, you know, everything is replaceable. So for me, you know, I wouldn't really be too focused on one specific model if I wanted, you know, a good jazz Telecaster, I wouldn't be looking for like a specific model. There's loads of them that are really good, uh, to be honest with you. So I wouldn't really kind of feel like you have to have one guitar unless you want it. You can always walk away from something if you're not happy with it. That's my second point. The third point is to live with a guitar before changing it. Unless you're very sure what you like and what you don't like about guitars, then more often than not, you can change something, not be happy with it still and you know, you're basically kind of wasting your time and your money potentially. So try and live with the guitar. If you think you don't like the pickups, just kind of give it a couple of weeks or a couple of months before making a decision to change them. Because, you know, unless you can do it yourself, which I know some of you can, you're very good at changing pickups and setting guitars up, then, you know, you've got to kind of do, you've got to take it to somebody and pay to have that done. And even if you can do it yourself, uh, from what I understand of the process, it's quite, um, a process isn't it you know you've got to kind of take the guitar apart and take the strings off and stuff like that so yeah that would be my third point would be to live with a guitar for a while before changing things make sure that you're really kind of sure if you're going to change string gauges if you're going to change pickups if you're going to change pots on the guitar that it's going to be something that'll be worth your time and effort 
The next point is that the feel of the guitar is impossible to convey on camera. That's easier said sometimes than what it is, but you know, once you've got a guitar in your hands and you're playing it and you're hearing how it's reacting to an amp or something like that, it's a very different feel just watching it on a camera. You know, you could be watching a guitar on camera and it could have old knackered frets that need replacing, it could have kind of crackly pots and stuff like that. So there's all kinds of things there. And if you're watching, you know, a guitar with nice studio lights and stuff like that, and it's nicely recorded, then it can seem really good, but it could be very different uh, when it's in your hands. So that's one thing to consider. And also, you know, another thing that um, often intrigues me is that sometimes when you record guitars and you listen back to the recording of a guitar, especially in a mix, the difference is very, very subtle. You know, let's be honest, really. If we're, you know, comparing a couple of, you know, decent Telecasters, then generally speaking, most of them will sound pretty good in the hands of a good player. None of them generally sound bad. Um, the difference to me is how a guitar feels and responds in your hands, and that's something that can never be, um, you know, conveyed on camera. So it's something that I always consider um, when watching any kind of videos is that the feel of a guitar is something that is different from just how it appears to be on camera. There's a video that I recorded a while ago in which I compared my Gibson ES125 to a, a Gordon Fifth Avenue, which is... You know, they're both cool guitars, and if you watch that video, in some ways they sound pretty similar. But in real life, the Gibson, uh, you know, absolutely blew the good in a way. I thought it was, uh, it felt much better, responded much better. Um, and it's one of those things that you can never quite get until you actually play both of those guitars in person. The next point is that you can only play one guitar at once, right? You can only play one guitar at once. You might be able to have, you know, one or two out that you rotate between, but, you know, if you've got a lot of guitars, then you can't play them, and sometimes they could be sat in cases for a while. So for me, that could be, you know, a decision whether or not I buy another guitar or if I sell guitars even, you know, you can only play one at once and how many of us have got, you know, endless amounts of practice hours a day to kind of rotate between all of these guitars. So that's one thing to consider as well. Obviously, you want to gain confidence and trust with the guitar. So if you've got 10 different guitars and you don't play one for months and then you suddenly take it out for a gig and it feels strange, then, you know, at least for me, that's not an ideal situation that I'd like to be in. So you can only play one guitar at once is that point. The next point is that it is easier to buy a guitar than what it is to sell a guitar. It is easier to buy a guitar than what it is to sell a guitar. There are several people right now, or several sellers, that will happily take money to sell their guitar, no problem, or you could just literally go online, obviously, and buy any guitar that you want. Um, but selling a guitar, that can be very, very tough sometimes, um, depending, you know, sometimes some guitars go within a couple of days, sometimes it's weeks, sometimes it's months, um, you know, at the time of recording this, when the economy is kind of um, a little bit, you know, <laughs> stretched, let's put it that way, then it, it can be challenging, you know, I mean, having said that, some guitars, you know, do sell, I have seen a couple come up and they're running gone days, you know, maybe rare models or cheap models or things like that, but um, yeah, as a general rule, it's much easier to buy a guitar than to sell a guitar. So unless you're kind of sure that you want it, really, um, that's where it comes down to. Because, you know, no one ever makes massive, massive amounts of money from guitars. Then only buy it if you want it, because sometimes selling them can be more hassle than more it's worth. The next point is one that I often like to remind myself of, and that is to enjoy what you have enjoy what you have if there's a, a guitar that you kind of um, you know thinking that you don't like or whatever then you know leave it for a while and then maybe in a week or two pick it up put some new strings on it start playing it again and I've done that a few times um, on, on certain guitars you kind of think that you don't like them but you put some new strings on and you give it a clean and you start playing it uh, and then you kind of you know questioning why you ever didn't like it really so it's very good also to appreciate what you have if you've only got one guitar that you absolutely love then yeah appreciate it enjoy it and love it if you've only got one amp that you really like then enjoy it and appreciate it because you know like i said there's always another guitar there's always something else that can kind of come up uh, and sometimes you know if you've done what i've done a few times is you don't realize how good something is until it's gone and when it's gone it's gone isn't it sometimes so 
yeah, it's good to enjoy it and realize what you have. And there's been a few guitars which I've got and then I didn't realize how good they were until I'd had them for a couple of years. And um, it's made me much more appreciative of, of them, you know, after, after kind of realizing that. So yeah, don't forget to appreciate what you have. The last point might be a little bit controversial, but it basically backs up what else I've been talking about. And that is that, in my opinion, guitars and amps are not really great investments, um, I don't think. I know that's debatable and, you know, if, if you buy a vintage guitar from the golden era of Fender and Gibson and you save it for, you know, 10, 20 years, then yeah, it's probably going to go up in value. You know, you're probably at least going to see a return on your money. But that's not really a good investment, is it, really? I don't think that's a good investment. And, um, you know, at the time of record, I suppose it's nice to know that you could potentially get your money back if that matters to you. But if not, then, you know, it, it doesn't matter, does it? But I always think it's strange buying a guitar for investment purposes because, if, say, for example, if you spend five grand on a guitar, on maybe a vintage guitar or something like that, well, you know, yeah, maybe it is worth that. Maybe you got a good deal for it, but... Who do you know that's going to buy a guitar for five grand right now? That's going to come, you know, you might have a few friends. Maybe you do know a guitar dealer or someone that likes vintage guitars. But most of the people that I know don't really want to spend that kind of money on a guitar. So it's kind of, you know, worth considering that if you're buying an investment piece. And um, yeah, another thing is that sometimes if you're doing that to kind of, you know, for investment purposes, if you look at interest rates on a savings account, if you put, say, a five grand into a 5% um, savings account, then you could get £5,250 back, I think, in maybe a year's time. Well, if you get a guitar, I mean, there is a chance that it could go up that much in value, but equally, even if you just held it for a year, you'd still have to sell it, you'd have to list it. Whereas a savings account, all you've got to do is put five grand, leave it, don't touch it, and then in 12 months, you'll get 250 pounds for, for doing nothing. So yeah, I always, I always think it's debatable um, if guitars are good investments or not. Okay, so that concludes this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it and found it useful. What I'd like to know is what are some of the lessons that you've learned from buying and selling guitars? Please share your thoughts in the comment section and if you have any questions, then please drop them in the comment section below and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this.